Hey, Keith, Metro Police. Come over here. Hey, Metro Police, come over here, all right? Thanks, buddy. Come on over here. Appreciate your cooperation, okay? I'm gonna stand right here in front of the car. Yep, sir. Yep, go and put I'll it down. I know, hang on. Put, put that down. Okay, all right. New body camera video of the arrest of Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, the man accused of ordering the murder of rapper Tupac Shakur. I, I, need, I, need, I, need, I need a drink. Yeah, we'll let you get a drink. We're also getting a look at the evidence prosecutors showed the grand jury to indict Keefe D. When I first shot it, it big boy in the head. I thought he was dead. Like, damn, he's dead. And a reporter who's covered Tupac's murder weighs in on why it took 27 years to make an arrest what the murder charge would have meant to the legendary rapper's mother. I, I think it, it would have been a, a big moment for her to, um, to see justice. Welcome to Law & Crime Sidebar Podcast. I'm Anjanette Levy. We are taking a look at six critical pieces of evidence that the grand jury in the case of Dwayne Keefe D. Davis saw as they indicted him. And we're also getting a closer look at body camera footage from the arrest of Dwayne Keefe D. Davis a week ago. Keefe D. was walking near his home when a Las Vegas Metro police officer approached him last Friday. Take a look. Hey, Keefe, Metro police. Come over here. Hey, Metro police, come over here, all right? Thanks, buddy. Come on over here. Appreciate your cooperation, okay? I'm gonna stand right here in front of the car. Yep, sir. Yep, go and put it down. I know, hang on. Put, put that down for a second, all right? Okay. You have anything on you, sir? No. Uh, Dirty? Okay, yeah, let me, we'll get you a drink. Hang on, all right? Just want to make sure you got no weapons on you or anything, okay? I'll separate the pizza. Thank you. Put your palms together like you're clapping. I just want to make sure these cuffs can be all right on you. Yep. Uh... Officers also put leg shackles on the accused murderer. The other day when I was in Vegas for Keefe D's arraignment, which was continued, District Attorney Steve Wolfson said that Keefe D was talking with police after he was cuffed. Here's a little of what he said. All right, sir, go and uh, have a seat right in here. I'm gonna help you out. Yep, just kind of put your butt up against there. Kick that foot up. You ready? I'm a pro, dude. I got it. You got it? All right. He said, I'm a pro. He said, I'm a pro. All right. Keefe D says, I'm a pro because he knows the drill. He did time in federal prison on drug charges and was a higher up with the South Compton Crips. Keefe D says he moved to Las Vegas 14 years ago. He asked the officer a few questions as they drove to the jail. You all following me last night? Nope. So why y'all didn't bring the media? Why would we bring the media? Keefe arrest came after a nearly three-month-long grand jury investigation. Prosecutors showed the grand jury photos of the people in the white Cadillac with Keefe D that night. Along with Keefe D, there was also the driver, Terrence Brown, and backseat passengers, DeAndre Big Dre Smith, and Keefe D's nephew, Orlando Anderson. Prosecutors also showed clips from interviews that Keefe D granted to the Art of Dialogue YouTube channel. Prosecutors showed grand jurors a full interview of Keefe D that was posted in September of 2021. Keefe D talked about how he and his crew tried to find Tupac at the 662 Club after Tupac and Suge Knight had beaten up Keefe D's nephew, Orlando Anderson, at the MGM Grand. Y'all was actually waiting at 662 for Tupac and Orlando can fight, right? Yeah. Tell me about that, because Orlando actually wanted to fight Tupac, right? Yeah, you're going to get his ass knocked out. So Lane had hands. One punch. Oh, for real? He had hands? Oh, hell yeah. Like, God. Yeah. So tell me about that. Orlando saying he wanted to fight Tupac and have a heads up with him. We was just, uh, I was going to tell Shug, let him get down. That's all. He's just going to beat his ass. Then, Keefe D talks about how they spotted Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight driving down the street. Some women were yelling his name. Tupac! 
toolbox, and he was, hey, you know, that's bullshit. You know, a real he gonna be sitting down and set his ass down somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I'll be hanging out the window. Just wanna be seen. And like we said, we pull up to the little stoplight, and they, they, they was making the right. It was about 17 cars. We just pulled up in the gutter lane and seen their ass. Yeah. And that first shot, it hit big boy in the head. I thought he was dead. Like, damn, he dead. Dre, he was the one that was supposed to shoot, you know, Tupac and Suge, but he got scared, right? No, he didn't really get scared. You know, he wasn't ready for that. He was young. They was youngsters, man. Kids. But once again, I mean, y'all Crips, right? So he should be used to that, right, Dre? So why was he, he... wasn't ready for that. Everybody, everybody got a role, man. Everybody ain't, everybody so ain't the killers. Shooting. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't 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 gonna kill. So everybody Dre, ain't he with that. Shooter? No. Okay, so but he was the one that was supposed to shoot up Tupac and Suge, but for some reason he wasn't ready for it, so he gave the gun to Orlando, right? Something like that, yeah. And Orlando is the shooter. He's the known shooter. I mean, everybody know Orlando Anderson was a shooter. So Dre got cold feet. He didn't want to do it. He gave the gun to Orlando, and Orlando shot Tupac and Shug. Yeah, he did his thing, yeah. So there's Keefe D saying that basically his nephew, Orlando Anderson, shot at Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight. But one of the witnesses who testified at the grand jury said it was actually Big Dre who fired the weapon. Now, we obtained photos that prosecutors showed the grand jury. One includes the last photo taken of Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight before the shooting. There's also a photo of a death row records chain Tupac was wearing that night, and several photos of the scene, including vehicles in Tupac and Suge's caravan, the interior of the BMW bloodied from the shooting, and photos of the area that show shell casings on the ground. Keefe D will be back in court on October 19th, and Law and Crime will, of course, have that hearing covered for you. I spoke with Kathy Scott. She is a veteran reporter, and she has covered Tupac Shakur's murder from the very beginning, and she's written two books about the case. The first is The Killing of Tupac Shakur, and later she wrote the book The Murder of Biggie Smalls. I spoke with Kathy Scott about a number of things, including why she believes it took so long to solve this crime and what Tupac Shakur's mother would have thought about this arrest. Kathy, what was your reaction when Dwayne Keefe D. Davis was indeed indicted for his alleged role in the murder of Tupac Shakur? Um, I was really pleased. I mean, my first first thought was, uh, you know, about time. Good on them. It wasn't surprising that it was Keefe D. because I knew, of course, that he was in the car and he was um, Orlando Anderson's uncle and that they all went out to, you know, shoot Tupac so uh, but but the um, we did have a little bit of notification of it you know it was when the search warrant, warrant was done that that the world knew that this might happen so it was um, no surprise but very belatedly be no surprise but very belatedly Sure. Uh, and that's because it's it wasn't a surprise because of the search warrant, of course, but also uh, the fact that Keefe D had been making statements about this publicly for some time. He had written a book, Compton Street Legend, and then, of course, had granted a number of interviews, including uh, to BET and to um, some YouTube channels. Yeah. You know, as one cop once told me, as you <clears throat> Cricks are stupid. That's why they get caught. And you can't keep people from themselves. But I don't know if he thought there <clears throat> there was a statute of limitations that had expired, you know, but but um it I think he must have thought all this time had gone by and oh I was just what did he call himself? He called himself a witness. Dude, you're in the car. You provided the gun. You you went. Everybody in that car had the intent to go hurt Tupac. Tupac has payback for the beatdown earlier at the uh, MGM Grand. So 
for some reason he he thought he was just bragging on where he was and what he did and thought you know only one person would be responsible when everybody in the car was responsible but you know he's a he was a street gang you know member so he obviously wasn't up on the law and got got great evidence that 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 the police department could finally put this to bed it made it real easy it's a it's a slam dunk what was it like covering that case because you know to hear the people on the scene that night tell it you know there was an entourage there there we know about the women in the other vehicle who were kind of yelling at Tupac and they were going to go to the club with him and Suge Knight um you know they said nobody's talking nobody saw anything even though there's a bunch of people there and Suge Knight we know from Keefe D looked him straight in the eyes and saw him um at least that's what Keefe D says so covering this case as a reporter, did did you sense frustration? Were you frustrated at times? Well, the police department clearly did not appear to want to solve the crime, and uh, they held a new they held a news conference. All the sports writers were in town from for the Bruce Selvin Mike uh, Tyson fight, which is why Tupac was in town, and. Um, so they held a news conference and all those reporters were there. So there are a ton of reporters in town, but they at that conference, but police did not open it to questions. And I frankly think they thought it would go away. And um, they, you know, they weren't answering reporters calls. They talked to me because I was a local reporter, but they want to talk to out of town reporters. So, um, but the, uh, the thing in, in, about Compton and not talking. And, you know, there's something called street justice. The next day, the Bloods went out and and got into a, a shooting match and did all kinds of drive-by shootings. And one of the guys in the car, um, when Tupac was shot, he was shot on the streets of Compton a day or two later during that bloodbath. Um, and, you know, the cops call that two for one, you know, you shot me, then I'm going to shoot you. But, but, um, so that, that could be part of it. Why witnesses and stuff weren't talking because they were going to take care of it themselves. And, um, uh, but, and then Orlando was running all over the, the West side, the South side, the South central and bragging you know, I capped Tupac, I capped Tupac. And then six days later, when Tupac died, he stopped talking. And then he lawyered up with the same lawyer his, his um, uncle now has. Um, so you don't lawyer up unless you, you think you've committed a crime. Did I hear you right that you said that you felt that the police did not want to solve this? They wanted it to go away? Oh, I was told that. Yeah. And, you know, I was a crime. I was I was a, I was on the beat at the police beat at the Las Vegas Sun. So, you know, I checked in every day with homicide and and all the other things, you know, related to crime that I covered. And um, so they knew me. You know, we were friendly. And um, I was told by a higher up that a big trial like that with all kinds of gang bangers coming in town and all the hip hop crowd that it would be bad for tourism and that was dur during the push remember back in I don't know if you remember but back in the 90s early 90s mid 90s there was a big push to try to turn Vegas into family destination and there's big PR. I do, I do remember that. Yes. Yeah. And so that was in the middle of the family destination it was poor timing for that, for that. And so they just simply, you know, weren't answering questions, weren't providing anything, you know, anything new for anybody. They appeared to not be covering the crime. Compton PD arrested, but they didn't arrest. They took Keefe, uh, they took Orlando Anderson uh, they detained him and they raided uh, Keefe D's house during a gang raid roundup and they found a Glock in the house while well, Tupac was shot with a Glock. And what did they find in Keefe D's house now? 40, 40 caliber 
uh, you know, bullets that, that match, that don't match, but go into a Glock. So um, they've got, They've got circumstantial evidence on 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 Kefi and they also have art evidence. But but part of the reason today they're doing it is because um, there's a new sheriff in town. He got elected last year, and and also with Kefi D coming out with the you know idiotically coming out with a book where he admits being into the car in the car they knew he was in the car police did because of compton pd intelligence they shared so they knew that but that was just from the cops to have it as hard evidence now makes it much easier e easier to um to prosecute all the witnesses and stuff. It's been so long, almost 30 years, that that's tough to do. So he he put in a book, that's hard evidence, you know, that that uh I you know that he did it. I would imagine someone tipped off the police that there was this book out there. Um, because I don't think they go around, you know, looking at books when they come out, you know, written by gangbangers. One person who did not live to see the arrest in Tupac Shakur's murder, his mother, Afini Shakur. How would she have viewed the arrest of Kifi D? I, I think it, it would have been a, a big moment for her to um, to see justice. But she was, you know, when asked um, uh, several times, I, I talked to her as well, but when asked, you know, she says, I'm not about the crime. I'm about who he was. And, but this of course would have been a big moment for her, but, you know, she was, she, she, she kept his legacy alive and, and in a very respectful way. And, um, you know, she represented herself in court, you know, for when she was in her twenties for murder, no attorney and she beat it. And this was a very strong woman with a strong foundation. And I think that's how she survived losing her only son. Um, but, you know, he lives on in his music and I think that's how she looked at it. But, you know, rest in peace for her and, and uh, wherever she is, you know, maybe she does know. Where do you see this case going next? Uh, the case against Kifi D, do you, do you think this goes to trial? Do you think he tries to plead out? What do you, what do you see happening? Is it just too early to tell? Well, I thought um, right off the bat, um, the way they held that huge and you know, the biggest news conference short of, of the mass killing in Vegas, it's the biggest one they've ever had. And um, so I thought, oh, they're going to take this all the way. And then I was on a podcast recently with a, a former um homicide cop, not, not the, not the Tupac team, but he was a homicide cop. And I, I knew him back in the day. And he said that he's talked to, to homicide and stuff in, and the district attorney's office. And he said, they're, they're going to want to early on try to plead this out. Cause he, he you know, he's looking at murder one, which is life. So um, they could plead him down to 30, 25 years. But their thing is they've got such good goods on him. And he wanted to plead out a few years earlier. So that, that's their goal, I think. So we're going to see a conviction, but I think it's going to be by him, um, him getting a queen for a day give up the goods and then uh, take a lesser charge and go to, go to, go to prison for a couple of decades. He's 60 years old. I'd hate to see him get 15 years and get out on eight on good time. So hopefully they're going to, he'll get a big sentence. So he'll be off the street for the rest of his life. Well, Kathy Scott, thank you so much uh, for coming on. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope to talk to you again about this. Uh, it's a really interesting case two actually very sad cases it, it is very sad it was really sad so it's nice to see justice for um you know for tupac i wish his mom were here for it but um and thank you for covering it too yeah. you know getting the word out so and thanks for having me it's been a pleasure
And that's it for this edition of Law & Crime Sidebar Podcast. You can listen to and download Sidebar on Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always watch it on Law & Crime's YouTube channel. I'm Anjanette Levy, and we will see you next time.